Hello world and welcome to another episode of Uber. In today's video we are going to secure a lambda using API Gateway IAM authorizers. If you want to know more about serverless, cloud computing or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started! <laughs> So this is the second video, well, this is the third video, this is the second practical video on the API Gateway Secure Mechanisms. I have created the first video where I explain all the different mechanisms that we are going to cover in this series on, and then I will, uh, I created a practical video for API Gateway Authorizer, the Lambda Authorizer. So now we are going to work with IAM Authorizer and we are going to build a practical example with a backend using SAM and we will create a SAM application with a Cognito user pool, with a Cognito client, with a Cognito identity pool. And this identity pool will, uh, when a user register to this uh, Cognito identity pool, it will get an authorizer role that has the policy that this user can invoke the API gateway. And the API gateway will have an authorizer that is only as accepting IAM policies that are uh, valid. So these two things will work together. And for testing everything, I will set up a front-end application, a React application, very simple, but you can see the whole flow, how it works. So let's go to the code. So in this video, we are going to create an API gateway that has an IAM authorizer. And if that authorizer go through, then it will call the Lambda. For that, we are going to use Amazon Cognito user pools and user identities. Now, what we will do is we'll create a user pool that has a Cognito client. And when a user log ins to that Cognito user pool, it will uh, get a valid role from the Cognito identity pool. And this valid role, we have a policy that allows to invoke the API gateway. And if that's the case, then it can invoke the API gateway with that uh, authorizer and the call will go through. So to get started, I will be using two projects as the base project of my application today. All the codes uh, are available in GitHub and in the description box below, you can find the links for those projects. We are going to start with the backend. The backend is this application, some simplest app. We already used it for a previous video and it's a very simple uh, sum app that I'm going to modify and all these cognitos there. And then from the front end, we are going to modify, but very, very little. The web application I did for similar video I did like many <laughs> years ago with API Gateway Authorizer, but this time was with serverless framework. I'll leave you the video on the description box as well, so you can check it out, how we build this client. So I will just clone these two repos into one, into one project that I will create that it will call some cognito of. I will create two folders in there, the client and the backend, so everything is was in, in one repo. So I will put in the backend the, the simplest app, and I will clone it there, and I will do the same with the client, with the web. React website. When I have those two projects cloned, then I will just open everything in Visual Studio Code and I will start working. So the first one, I will modify the template YAML from the backend and we will add the Cognito user pool, the Cognito identity pool and everything we need. Because we want to have everything as infrastructure as code, so I want to define everything from here and not need to go to the console. So the first thing we are going to define is the Cognito user pool. We will put in a pool name and then I'm going to use a Lambda that will run after a user sign up. And this Lambda, what we'll do is we'll confirm the user so we don't need to go to the email of the user and confirm the email address. Then I will set up the policy for the password to have eight characters at least and set the attributes that I want to use. I want to use the email and well, all these kind of things that are in the Cognito user pool. Then I will be defining the Cognito client that is making reference to that pool. So there we can get that. And then I will be defining also the Lambda function. This is quite interesting because I putting the in code inline in this template, 
YAML. So then you can see there that in the inline code, you can see that here's just returning that the user is confirmed. So that's super cool that we can just run this Lambda in here and we don't need even to, to create it in the, um, in the project. So I like this. The next thing I'm going to do is to create the Lambda Cognito user pool execution permissions. Basically, just give permissions to this Lambda to, to do its thing. Because as we know, when we create a new uh, resource in AWS, it doesn't have permissions. So it's important to, to give the rights. Then I'm going to create a Cognito identity pool. And this one will uh, make a reference to the client and to the user pool that we just created. And this Cognito user pool will have two roles. The authorizer role that will give to users that are authorized and then authorized role that will give to unauthenticated users. So the one that is interesting for us is the authorizer role. And here we will have defined a policy that is um, basically this policy that we are going to give permissions to invoke an API. And that's the one that we are interested in. That's the one that we want to invoke the uh, API gateway. And then I just do the same for the unauthorized, but there is nothing interesting there. It's just basic stuff. The one thing I, I like to do for uh, some is to define the outputs. So we can define here the Cognito user pool ID, the Cognito client ID, and the Cognito entity pool ID. So then when this deploy, we can see it in the terminal and we don't need to go to the console to find all these things because that's always annoying. So they are ready for us to consume from the terminal. And with that said, then we go and collapse everything because we have a huge uh, template file now with nice uh, cloud formation. So we have defined everything here and we go back to the top of the file to my API. There we will define uh, two things. First, the course. Uh, we will uh, put everything as an asterisk. You could collapse everything as course asterisk and it will work. And then we will have the auth. Here we are defining the authorization. So we are going to say that the default authorization is AWS IAM. And then we will, we need to have this auth default authorizer to course preflight. So when you have course, what will happen is you will have an options uh, API that will be created kind of automatic without you doing anything. And if you don't put this line, what will happen is that the course will get the authorization in it. And, and as you cannot define it in the, um, it kind of comes out of the box, then you cannot disable this anyhow. And if your co uh, options uh, method has uh, needs authentication, then they it cannot be called and everything breaks. So with this, then you remove that default authorizer to the course, to the options uh, method, and then everything works. The options is uh, open, and then your get in this case is uh, authorized needs the authorization. So that's something very important. And then we don't need to do anything in our function because our function is already calling that API and it's getting inheriting everything from there. Then we just leave it like that and we are fine. Then we go to the handler and we will just modify it a little bit so we can see that we are doing something. We add the headers for the course and then we return in the body just this as an authenticated call. And then we need to go and change a little bit our packet JSON to change our deployment scripts. So I will just change the name of the packet JSON because we just brought it from the internet, from GitHub. And I will change my stack name to something that is unique. And then that deploy script, it's okay. Everything stays the same. Now I can deploy and this uh, should do something. To deploy, basically we go to the folder of the backend and then we just install the project because we just run it for the first time, just to make sure everything is there. And then we just run npm run deploy and this runs all the scripts that are in there. And then let's see what happens. So basically something failed. Let's see what failed. Deploy fail. So the error is saying that we need to add one more capability. We have the capability I am. And because of everything we added in the template, now we need to add the capability name I am. 
So we just add it, we just put another space and uh, next to the capability I am, we add the, this new capability that is the error is suggesting. And now we can deploy it again and this should work. And I will speed this up because it's just a deployment. When it's deployed, then we will see the outputs and we can see everything we need to uh, configure our client. So let's go to the client and configure it. So we open the client and in the source, we have this config sample. Now we copy it and we paste it and we rename it to config. And here we will write all our configuration for our frontend. So here is what we need to complete. We need to put the region for the API gateway and for the cognito. Then we need to uh, put the URL, this is that one. I think without the last slash, so it works. Then we need to put the cognito user pool. We get it also from the output. The cognito client ID, it's also in the output. And the identity pool is also in the output. And that's everything we need basically to get this started and kind of working. This is a project I created like two years ago and I created with a totally different backend. And it's something I will just do npm install and then npm start and it will start and it will work with a totally different backend. And this is the magic thing of having this infrastructure as code and everything very decoupled. You can just bring whatever. So now we will do, uh, we will uh, start this, install this, and then we will start it and we'll try it out. We will see there is a couple of things that are not working, but they are super easy to fix and they are mostly cosmetic. Well, cosmetic, yes, I will say so. So let's just uh, speed this up and install this npm start after that. And after everything is started and open in the browser, we can check it out. Good. Now we're starting, we run npm start and everything is opening. So the first thing we are going to do is to go and create a new user and see if this is working. So let's go to sign up and then we put an email, a password with more than eight characters and then we press sign up. And we are already confirmed the user with the Lambda. So this step is not needed. So we can just click on the login button and uh, log in with this user and this should work. Now the API has been called. We can see it in the inspect in a moment, but it's not displaying anything. So let's go and fix the ask for the confirmation code in our code. And that's super simple. We will remove it. So in the containers you can find in the sign up in the sign up file, the logic for the confirmation code. We just remove it, remove everything related to the confirmation code, and then modify a little bit after a new sign up happens, and then it just works. So here we have the handle submit, that is the one that is creating the new user. So we will take from the uh, confirmation submit the part that after the user is created, we uh, sign in with the user we just created and then we just uh, go to the main main screen of our application and then we can remove everything else from the confirmation code so it's, it's pretty straightforward so let's remove that that we don't need anymore and also we remove the rendering of the of the form we leave that uh, form because that's the sign up form and then we fix in the render which form to display. Now we just have one, so we just display the, the login, the sign up form. And that's everything. Let's test it out. Let's create a new user. Test two. Put a password with more than eight characters. And let's sign up. And woo, it worked. Good. The next thing we need to fix is that. Uh, the test API is really not showing the call to the authenticated uh, API. Even though we are calling it, we will see it in a moment in the in the network. We can see down there that we are calling the hello endpoint, and there is the 
the response is authenticated code. So let's go to the home GS and let's fix that. That's super easy. In the render test API is uh, getting the, the message of the response. We don't have a message. So that's why nothing is being shown in the screen. We just get the whole object and voila. Now we can see that. And this is all the application. So it's super simple. It's using Amplify in the front end and React. The backend is using uh, SAM and Cognito and everything. It's super simple to configure. It just took us like 15 minutes. So all the code you can find in the description box and all the links that you need are there. And if you have any questions, just please ask them in the comments. This was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. And in the next videos, you are going to see more examples on how to use API Gateway security mechanisms. If you there is something you want to see from API Gateway, Cognito, Sam, Lambda, or whatever, let me know in the comment box below. I like to make content that you want to watch. So from here, you can see other videos from my channel. And if not, I see you next week with another episode of Fubar. Ciao, ciao!